All right, let's see how this works here. You guys see me all right? I'm actually in my garage right now. Um, for those of you guys who are here, I just want to apologize for being so late. I literally just got back from mowing, hence the reason I'm in the garage and I don't even have a fire tonight. I sincerely want to apologize about that. Um, so for those of you guys who are here, I just want to go ahead and introduce you. What's going on guys? I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Welcome back to another episode of Lawn Fires where the fires are hot, the lawns are green, and the questions are engaging. Welcome back to another episode. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what this is, this is basically a weekly live open format show I do every weekend um, on Friday nights around 6 o'clock, which based on the mowing schedule I had this week, I might have to start pushing it back to 7, which uh, a lot of you guys have noticed. I've actually pushed it back an hour. It used to be 5 p.m. and then now it's 6 p.m. and then because the days are getting longer and I'm out later, you know, because I have to mow, um, it's pushing me back with these live streams. So I really wanted to apologize for that. So I think what I'm going to do in the near future here, not next time, but in the near future, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch the time zone. I'm going to go ahead and put the time slot back to uh, back to 7. So then that way it will give me more time to do what I need to do if I'm late. So either way... Um, I'm waiting on this guy right here, the iPad, to charge up, but in the meantime, I can read your questions on the screen and answer them, and, um, <clears throat> oh, dude, I like this one, M Mace JK0929, dude, the more you mow, the later you show, that's great, I like that, seven is too late for me, I have other things to watch. Um, is it true Milo sale being stopped in Indiana for EPA certification? Um, Sean, I have no idea on that. I'll have to read up on that. But either way, it's not really going to affect me too much because I'm not going to be using Malorganite too much in my personal arsenal, more so as a test plot. Alan, what's up, brother? How you doing? Welcome to the show. We're actually, I'm actually glad you made it just in time. I was actually 30 minutes late because I've been, uh, I, been I was out doing some work, hence the reason I still got my... Uh, my golden diesel gloves on dude by the way if you guys haven't checked these out these are um these this company here golden protective uh these gloves are called black diesel in fact if you guys watch pete with gci turf uh he wears these a lot when he does his work and as you can see man look at these things are just very strong so i can definitely see why pete recommends these because they're really they're really nice gloves but yeah, I'm actually going to be mentioning mentioning them in this weekend's video. I'm going to be talking all about uh, spot spraying weeds, post-emergently, how to do it, all that kind of thing. So all of that's going to be coming up this weekend. I'm really excited about it. Um, yeah, just a lot of great great stuff coming around. And I'm also going to mention these. Uh, going to be mentioning these gloves too, and possibly I'll have to message with them and see if I can get you guys an affiliate so you can get these cheaper. <coughs> all right. Let's see what we got here. Let me let me let me make sure I didn't miss anything. I know I'm really late. I want to apologize for that. But like I said, business comes first. Got to get that stuff done. And then as a result, I'm probably gonna have to start pushing this show back more and more. Um, <laughs> Silverback having trouble getting Jake's fire going. No, um, no, M Mace J K. Uh, sorry, man. I I was really late tonight because of work. All right, I just watched the latest Grass Daddy video. Now I have a whistling tune in my <laughs> yeah, man. I'll admit there's some times where I'm actually mowing and I can't get that whistling, uh, that whistling theme that he uses on my head. It's just it's weird. I don't know what it is. By the way, real quick while I'm in here, I have a good question for all of you guys. What do you guys like to listen to when you mow? Because me personally, I love jazz, dude. Nothing beats jazz when it comes to mowing for me, especially when it's like 6.30 at night. I just got back from mowing my 12 accounts and all that. I come back. The best thing to do is I put some jazz on in my ears using my ISO tunes, which I don't have right now. And it's actually kind of a good thing because I try to, uh, you know, I try to act like the company sponsor me, but they really don't. Uh, that they, they just sent me a free product to demo and I happen to like it so I'm gonna mention it That's it. But either way I put the I put those in my ears I put on some smooth jazz and I go about mowing the yard as the Sun goes down. That's like the best freaking thing Cody jinx. I'll have to listen to Cody jinx. I'll put that in my memory Cody jinx 80s rock and jazz. Yes, Azalon landscaping. That's a really good way to go 
<laughs> if LCN is Seinfeld, I am Newman. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I listen to White Stripes to get my stripes right. That's cool, man. That's great. Um, is six weeks between apps with CX okay? Um, 79 Mini, I'm not sure. I haven't gotten a hold of it yet, but I believe that if you're smart with your applications and you want to apply it more often than that, then the best thing to do is to lower your application rate. Now, as you hear me say, if I happen to accumulate any carbon X this season, as well as Alan and Pete, they'll tell you, you know, uh, point, point 0.75 pounds in, point 0.72, that's really going to be the, that's really going to be the ideal. Uh, no need to go heavier than that, but if you want to apply it more often, you can always spoon feed it and put it down in lower amounts more frequently. I hope that makes more sense. <clears throat> I listened to Ray Guton. Huh. Have to listen to that. When will you get a walker or zero turn? I don't know. I'm hoping soon. Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, that's a good one. Listen to Mills. What sprayer nozzle do you use on your sprayers plus sprayer? This is a this is a great <laughs> this is a great question because you guys know who've been watching my sprayer calibration videos that I've been talking all about. Um, you know, I've been talking all about sprayer nozzles and how they have a lot to do with, you know, the amount of water that comes out of your sprayer in a certain amount of time, and you know, because that increases the speed. Anyway, let me just get to it. So I've been using this. Uh, I forgot what who the name was. Yeah, Greg Gregson's Clark. He makes like this wider this wider type of sprayer that outputs like, you know, large droplets of water in a single minute. I believe when I tested it, it puts out about um, eight ounces in eight seconds, and that's how long it takes me to walk a hundred square feet based on my measurements, twenty by five. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, then check out the playlist on the channel. Uh, Aiden, if you'd be a sport man, if you're still here, and leave a link to my sprayer calibration playlist. I talk all about the constants, the variables you need to think about, uh, as well as the measurements I use to um, spray the yard. You guys asking him, asking him about CX apps. What <laughs> WTF? I agree with you, Alan. In fact, I haven't gotten any yet. WTF? Question mark. <laughs> um, walk the line. Yes, yes, that's a good one. Um, Johnny Cash, listen to Milo's during a Malorganite. <laughs> yeah, man, I love that. From the YouTube Audio Library, Malorganite. Jake, is there a Milo shortage up north? Um, based on what I've been seeing at the Home Depot, I really haven't seen any. Um, I really haven't seen any on the shelves, so I guess I guess there is some sort of shortage going on. But I really don't have much to worry about because. Um, I'm not going to be using it a whole lot this year anyway because I'm I'm going all liquid on my lawn. If there's anything I'm going to be using it for, it's going to be my test plot, which I'm going to be introducing to you guys here within the next week or so. So stay tuned for that if you haven't. Um, so let's see, where, where did I go? Um, here's a good question right here. Um, going to try Carbonex for the first time this year. Uh, what does CarbonX do different from Milo? Well, basically, all I can tell you to break it down in a way so that you can understand it is that it's not a biosolid, so it's not made from human poop like Malorganite is. It's made from biochar, um, and all I can say is it nurtures the soil in a different way. So it is not organic in any way, shape, or form, and because of that, you're actually going to get um, you're actually going to get faster results, and because of that. Um, you can actually use it as a winterizer and as a starter fertilizer in the spring because you don't have to rely on that warm weather to get it going. Makes sense? So that's that's part of the benefit that we're going to get from CarbonX. Now, um, based on what I've been reading about it, that's that's pretty much what I can give you. But I do look forward to getting my hands on it soon this year if I can. So, Alan, if you're watching this, make it happen. I'm kidding. <laughs> Thanks for putting up the sticker. Honor to be with those others. You're welcome, Striper Man. Thank you very much for the sticker, man. Really appreciate it. Hold on. Let me see if this is true. All right, good. I'm going to go ahead and switch to reading the questions here. So if I missed your question, I apologize. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if it's really going to show up really well here, but uh, here, let me, let me pick it up real quick and show you. I got all my, got all my lawn equipment back there. See the sun's too bright. You're not really going to be able to see it. But uh, I literally, that's that's literally how how rushed I am tonight. I literally just got back from uh, 
literally got back from my client. Anyway, so that feels better. Let me get back into my element here. This won't take very long. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, once again, really sorry about being late. Um, based on how my schedule is going to look here in the next few weeks, uh, that's going to kind of determine whether or not I want to push this back an hour, um, which has been something I've been debating because you guys know, like I said, as the days get longer, I push it back because as the longer the days get and the more we get into the spring, the more mowing I'm actually doing. So, <clears throat> you know, I just want to make sure that getting everything done and that I can get on this at a reasonable time. And that's another thing. I want to make sure that I don't push it too late because at that point, um, at that point, I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to be burdening you guys by starting late. But I'm sure you guys understand that. All right, let me pull this up here. We're we're literally right there. Let me just open this up. We should be fine. All right. Now I can actually sit back for a for a change. Let's see what we got here. We got some people coming in. Um, lawn rolling or top dressing? My lawn is all over the place. Um, neither. Work on the soil. I, I get this a lot. You know, I don't mean to sound like a jerk when I say that, but I'm just being honest with you. A lot of you guys think you have bad soil, and you think the best way to fix that is to top dress. I mean, yeah, that might help you now, but you need to look at what's going to happen in the long term because. You're doing, first off, you're doing two things. Number one, you're bringing in foreign soil. You don't know where the heck it's been, right? And because of that, you, you don't know what kind of weed seeds you might potentially be bringing in. And then in conjunction with that, while you might be able to establish a little bit of rooting now when the seeds are young, what do you think is going to happen when things mature and they have to reach that soil layer that's compacted? It's just not going to work because of the fact that the soil's compacted and that the grass roots aren't going to be able to grow down deep like you want them to. Now, you might be able to establish turf there, but because you don't have that soil loosened up and you haven't worked on that soil, you're going to have a heck of a time getting it to stay green because you're going to have to be on it all the time. You have to water it constantly. You have to fertilize it. You have to do. You have to mow it. All sorts of things. You have to make sure that you don't stop caring for it because the day you stop caring for it, things are going to fail because it doesn't have a deep root system. In fact, that's why all the high players on YouTube, me, Alan. Uh, John, Pete, we all preach to you. Make sure your soil's right, or as Pete would say, get your dirt right. When he says that, there's a lot, there's just a lot that goes into it. You want to make sure that your dirt's right so that you don't have to worry about it later. All right. Um, do you ever apply synthetic fert and organic fertilizer in the same application? Uh, sometimes. It depends on the situation, though. Like, at our Project Lawn, and Alan and I did, we actually put down uh, the, the Triple Ten Starter Fertilizer, uh, and, and then in conjunction with that, we put down the Melorganite. And in total, that gave us about a pound and a half of nitrogen, so way heavier than, than I would want personally, but it was enough to wake the lawn up and, and keep it looking good going in and coming out of winter. So it was, it was a good situation. Now, you can do it if you want to. It's not going to hurt anything, but as far as the organic goes, but you want to make sure that the synthetic, you stay low. And the highest you should go really is about a pound, pound and a quarter. We don't really need a pound and a half. Holding off on my biostimulant, my creeping Charlie that I'm trying to get rid of, did I do right? Um, yes, you did, Linda Rafferty, because this is actually something I'm going to be talking about in my video this weekend as well. Um, I did mean to start my test plot in the backyard where I'm going to be applying various products from the next line as well as some organite you know putting up liquid versus granular you hear you'll hear all about that uh, next week but either way um, I decided to postpone that a week because I have a lot of weeds starting to pop up and because of that I want to make sure that I take care of those first and I want to make sure I take care of those first so that I don't have to worry about potentially pushing any growth on those now I'm not 100% sure on the science behind that, whether the fertilizer might do it, but I'm just going to assume that it might. So I'm going to go ahead and spray weeds right now. Um, and that really goes for a lot of you. If you notice weeds in your lawn, 
you should focus on that first. Focus on the problem at hand and then you can proceed with your program. Like me, for instance, I sprayed weeds literally two days ago. i uh, going to be doing a detailed video on it. Stay tuned for that if you haven't, so subscribe to the channel. But either way, um, did a whole detailed video on that. And because of the weed control and allowing the weeds to die down and all that, I'm going to go ahead and wait another week. And then we're going to get started with um, our round two applications for the next program, the LCN lawn, and then I'm going to be starting my test plot. So lots of content to come. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't, and you turn on your post notifications because we really got a lot coming on. Um, Jake, when are you releasing Milo scented air spray and candles? You know what? That actually sounds pretty... That sounds pretty cool. I mean, I, know, I, I get the joke there, but I'll have to talk to Aaron over there at Morgan and see what we can do. <laughs> um, let's see what we got here. Where's the cigar? Not old enough for that. Um, maybe, maybe in a couple years or so when the show's really big and you guys want to send me some stuff, by all means, feel free to. Um, what month should I put down pre-emergent to kill Poa annua? I, I want to overseed in September. I live in North Carolina. This is a great question. So based on where you live, you're going to have a very similar weather pattern, albeit a little different because you are further south compared to me. I'm in northwest Indiana. Uh, the best time to put down your um, the best time to put down your pre-emergent for Poa annua is going to be in September, typically when we do our aeration and overseeding. And keep in mind, because of that, you're going to have to make a decision. Because one thing I talk a lot about is that if you want to prevent Poa annua in the spring with a pre-emergent, then you're going to have to you're going to have to forfeit out of aeration and overseeding because you can't do them both together, right? You can't do them both together. The chemistry behind pre-emergent, right, is it's going to it's going to alter the growth pattern of the plant. It's going to kill it. And because of that, it can also have an effect on our, it can also have a negative effect on our new grass that we're trying to grow. So it's very important that if you decide to put down a pre-emergent in the fall, that you do not aerate and overseed. Now you can put down fertilizer, you can put down the starter fertilizer in the morganite like we talk about, or just the starter alone, whatever you want to do. Uh, get that, get that all down and at least push the growth that's there in conjunction with your pre-emergent. And overall, in the end, make sure that you water it in a good half inch if you have it. Um, <clears throat> so I hope that answers your question, Danny. Now, let me just say real quick that there are alternatives like Tenacity, uh, Mezzotrione, aka Tenacity that I talk about, that allow you to seed and put down your pre-emergent, but I don't really recommend that as it adds more difficulty to your regimen because Tenacity, while it does allow you to prevent the problem grasses, um, without harming your seed, it doesn't have that big of a residual. In fact, you get about six to eight weeks out of it, and, that, and because of that, you're going to have to constantly reapply, and that's not something I want to do. So when in doubt, look at the severity of your situation. Is the POA worse than the thinness of the lawn? Is it the other way around? It all depends on the severity. Figure that out, make a decision, and move forward. All right, I just completely <laughs> need to pull this up. God, come on. All right, here we go. I'm a little behind in the chat in case you can't tell. Hey, Jake, how's the business? How many clients this year? Do you sign contracts or not yet? Um, the business is great. Um, calls are picking up right now, now that we're coming into the season. In fact, everybody wants their lawn mode. And personally, I wish I could have waited a little I wish I could have started a little earlier because the lawns right now are growing so freaking fast that they're overgrown at this point. In fact, that's actually why I'm late tonight. I meant to be back around 5, 5.30. Uh, when, for those of you guys who saw me on Instagram, I meant to be back around that time because that is when, uh, that's when I would have been finished if I would have started the lawn a little earlier. But because I let it go a little late during the spring, um, two to three mowings in at my own lawn, these lawns are severely overgrown. So I'll own up to that mistake for sure. Why is there no fire tonight? Um, due to time constraints, Anthony J. Barton, it just would have taken too long and I didn't do it. Um, what are you doing? Sober back. Are you good? Yeah, we're fine. Who's we? Over here. 
All right. Let's see. Hmm. Week late. No, week late. Week night lawn work on hold because of all this rain. Yes, and Mace JK, I understand exactly what you're saying. In fact, we're supposed to get another freaking rain and snow flurry tomorrow. Not happy about that. Not happy at all. <laughs> Jake, tell them about the late. Oh, this is a great story. So listen, we have this lady in my neighborhood. She uh, she she lives up the street on the other on, on the other end over there. She has a corner lot, and I would ride by this woman's house every day, right? To and from customers in the neighborhood, I'd ride on I'd ride on my tractor set up here, which I don't know if you can see it, but because of the sun. But either way, I'd ride to and from that house every day on the way to and from customers. And I would look at this lawn and I would just say, man, what a dump. This lawn is, this lawn's got so much going on. I bet if I could talk to the homeowner and, you know, maybe put together a plan for her, we can probably get this lawn going in the right direction. So fast forward, about two to three years in, um, my, my neighbor, she goes on YouTube and she finds Alan's video about how to dominate your neighbor, right? Uh, kind, of, kind of upsetting that it was Alan's video and not mine, but you know, either way, it's fine. Sense of community. Um, she found his video, and then because of that, she dove deeper and found out that he lived, that he used to live here, doesn't live here anymore. And then she decided to message him on Facebook about the lawn, what, what she should, what he should do to it. And what Alan did is he put in an email form, sent it to me so that I can easily look at it. And Alan said. Listen, if you're looking for anybody to fix it, um, talk to Jake. He's in the neighborhood. Um, I'll bring it to his attention that he can put together a plan for you. So, Alan, thank you for bringing that to my attention, brother. I really appreciate it. And we'll have to, yeah, it's going to make more video content for me in the future. So I'm psyched about it. I mean, you guys know I get, that's another thing I've been doing a lot on the channel this year is I've been doing a lot of projects. Like, I have the LCN Lawn Revival going on over here. I have the Next Step Liquid Lawn Care program going on here. My test plot, which is going to be starting next week, going on here. Uh, and my project lawn I'm doing with the Visagas, Alan and I are doing over there. So basically, I got lawn care going on all around, north, south, east, and west. So I, I couldn't be more excited about it. Now, one of the things I am running into this year, and this is actually a different kind of problem for me is that I have too much content going on at one time so I have to kind of decide how I'm going to prioritize that like am I going to put out am I going to put out the LCM Lorma Bible first am I going to do the next step first am I going to do my test I have so much going on right I have to kind of decide how I'm going to break these down so I have to spend a lot of my weeknights figuring out which videos I'm going to release first and then I go from there but it's a good problem to have it really is because the more content I can put out in one week, the faster I can grow this reach in this YouTube channel and grow my credibility in the field. So, I'm really psyched about it. This iPad keeps signing out because I just keep I keep going on these tangents and I just keep talking. What are your thoughts on Revolver herbicide? I don't know. I haven't used it. I mean, I can tell you guys one thing. Based on my use of herbicides. It's not really, it's not really the brand you get, but it's the ingredients in it, right? If you have 2,4-D dicambuc and Clorac, then you're fine. If you want to hear more about that, subscribe to the channel and hear all about it on Sunday. Jake, is there a house fire? <laughs> That's funny. No, no, there's not, Eric. I promise. What in the world? Turn on the spread. <laughs> yeah, man, it's been a little dry. Do, do, do. Someone has a job. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, NS2361, but I can tell you I do have to mow clients in the neighborhood. <clears throat> Brad Abraham, aerate or soil loosener? Um, okay, so you guys hear me talk a lot about this on the channel, and you also hear a bunch of the, the high players in, on the YouTube community talking about it. And that is air, aeration versus air, the liquid air eight. Now, based on my experience, I gotta say, 
I actually prefer the liquid aeration over the mechanical. Now let me explain my thinking behind that. Number one is more coverage, better coverage to be exact. And what I mean by that is that whenever I spray a product like Aerate, I'm getting 100% coverage. In fact, I'm, I'm allowing for the product to penetrate 100% of the, the soil surface area, whereas with mechanical aeration, you're only getting about 20% because you're literally pulling cores out of the ground. While that's good, you're not getting the entire surface area of the soil. You're only getting a good 20%. You're only getting a good 20%. So basically what I'm trying to say is that they both accomplish the same thing really, but I think the liquid aeration is more mechanical aeration on steroids. That's how I think about it. Because when you put it down, it literally, you know, it, it literally gives you more flexibility as it will num A, it, as it will A, penetrate 100% of the soil surface area and B, because it is liquid, it's easier to get, it's less time consuming, you, you mix it in your sprayer, and you can really spray it anytime you want. It's going to benefit no matter what you do. So when in doubt on um, whether or not you should put down aerate, put it down. It's only going to help. Oh. Okay. Got to go run for a bit, Jake. Uh, Got to go have cake with the fam for a bit. Yeah, uh, Abe, by the way, for those of you guys who don't know, it's actually my buddy, Aiden, Aiden, Aiden's Lawn and Landscaping. It's his 14th birthday. So, Aiden, if you're still here, I just want to say happy birthday, brother. Yeah, I appreciate you. all you do for me. Hope you have a great 14th birthday. Sorry if I'm all over the place tonight. I just got back from work. You got to pedal faster, bro. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Matthew Koloski, Tenacity worked really well for my seeding last summer. Could definitely tell exactly where I applied it um, at seeding versus where I did it. Yeah, it's a very good product. Uh, Cass, Kathy um, Inat, when and why do you apply dethatch? Okay, so to answer the when, once you start getting heat in the forecast, which for us should be around early to mid-May, then that's when we could start using the dethatch product. Now the reason we use it is actually a couple reasons. Number one is to, is to put that thatch back in the ground where it can be utilized as a food source because one of the things I w we, I've talked about in the past when it comes to um, dethatching is mechanically removing that material and hauling it, off to the, hauling it off to the dump. Back then, probably the best thing you could do. But now having the education that I have, it's not the best thing. In fact, especially knowing that now with a product like deep thatch, I can put it back down. Instead of hauling all that deep thatch back off to the dump, I can put it back down into the soil where it can be utilized as a food source. That's really why we apply it, is for a more sustainable way of reusing that dead, de 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 comp decomposed material and putting it back into the ground where it can actually be used to uh, stimulate new life. So. It's, it's more of a sustainable way of going about lawn care. I hope that makes sense, uh, Kathy and Hat. That's why you use it. Now, as far as when, once you have a little bit of heat in the forecast and we're in the 60s, 80s range, you're fine. God, man, the cops are going crazy now. I guess spring is like thug season, right? We, prob we, had, we had like amber alerts like crazy this week, like 3 in the morning. Don't people got better things to do? Like, can't they just rob banks instead? <laughs> How do you feel about clients who want mows bi-weekly? Brad, I am glad you asked that question. I freaking hate them. But it's money, man. Right, Especially right now in the startup phase where I'm trying to add more onto my clientele. It'll do. But as I build that clientele and I know that I'm not going to lose a lot if I decide to drop those properties then I'll decide to drop them. But for now, they're, they're an asset to the company. I'm gonna keep them. But yeah, I really don't like bi-weeklies, especially when I preach to you guys to literally mow twice a week or once a week at least. And then you have these people who think they know what they're talking about telling me that I should mow it every two weeks. Or it's just that they're in a fight, or it's just that they're financially in a tough spot. I get it, right? But uh, I just, I don't, I don't like them. Period. I, I don't like them at all. Here, let me see if I could move this so we can get that sun back in there. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab my sweatshirt. It's over here. 
It's actually starting to get a little cold, which sucks. And then, so what's the what's the plan for tonight? Well, I'm gonna finish going through the chat here, answering some questions. And it is, we're at about 30 minutes right now, so I'm planning on getting off around 7.30ish or so. And then I gotta go, as Alan would say, enjoy the mow <laughs> on my bluegrass here because it's about five days grown, hasn't been mowed since then. So I really need to get out and think about what I'm gonna do there. God, what is up with this light? It's like really dark. Here, let's see if we can get some. Yeah, I'm really sorry about the lighting. I don't know why why the exposure is being all funky. It's it's really weird. Here, let me turn that up. That's the least I could do. I mean, this lighting is actually pretty cool. If we're if we're out here till 7:30, though, I'll go get an I'll go get a construction light. No problem. I have them all over in this garage. I have. Listen, I have every tool. You guys are gonna love this. I have every tool in this freaking garage, but a but a breaker bar, which I really need, especially with these new mowers I've accumulated. They, they're they they're a little old, and because of that, it's hard to take the blades off, so having a freaking breaker bar would be nice to get get those blades off. I'm sure you guys can relate who've, you know, had equipment inherited to you from family. Just got to figure that out. All right, let's keep going. Being a team like you in Ohio that does lawn care, says Colin Williams, landscaping, we have flooded... We have flooded area and the lawns are growing, but impossible to mow. Yeah, man, I feel your pain. It's it's rough around here, especially when you got to deal with those with those low spots in the lawn. You're getting rain in the forecast every day. You just got to wait for those areas to um, kind of dry out. And then really the best way to go about cutting them, if you have zip time, is just to take your trimmer over there. And if you don't have a high-powered trimmer, I'm telling you, man, you're having a heck of a time with it. <laughs> That's the truth. That is the truth. All right, let's see where we're at here. The content makes itself. Yes, Alan, that is 100% true. Um, let's see where we're at. <laughs> mm. Where are we at? Indies Lawn Care and Outdoor Adventures. Happy late birthday, Aiden. Oh, yeah, that's not for me. Where is your dad going? Hmm. Oh, that's a great question, Alan. He's going out to drink. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know what he's doing right now. All I know is he's taking his lady out for dinner. You know, got to do that to get a drink. <laughs> Who's your manager? Are you under contract? No, Anthony J. Barton. I am a... I'm self-employed completely. This is my business. This is my YouTube business. This is all mine. Um, let's see what we got here. Just found grubs in my mulch beds. How concerned should I be? Um, this is a great question. Now, if you're seeing grubs now, which is the t which is the norm, I wouldn't worry about them too much because coming into the spring here, our lawns are going to be growing so vigorously as well as the root system to a point where any damage they're doing is not going to show because of how vigorous and strong the lawn is. When I would worry about it would be early June. In fact, that's when I actually recommend you get your first grub preventative down because that's going to ensure, because that's going to give you coverage when it's needed because around that time the adult beetles emerge and they've laid their eggs and that's when they're going to start to feed on the root system and coincidentally that's also when we're heading into drought just due to the weather pattern. You know, it stops raining, the weather gets hotter, we're getting more direct sunlight. The lawn's getting drier, and because of that, it's weak, and any damage they're doing is going to be noticeable once the lawn recovers. So the best thing to do um, in our control is to, get down a pre, is to get down a preventative as soon as possible. Now, when I say as soon as possible, I don't mean right now because it's still way too early, but I'm talking more like early June because around that time, like I said, that's when the eggs are going to be in the lawn. They're going to hatch, and they're going to start feeding. So putting that down right now will suppress their appetite and keep them down in the ground dead where they belong um let's see 
So as far as whether you should be concerned or not, Iraq 43, I would not be concerned. Um, wait till the June to take care of them with a preventative. You can't just ask to see a man's equipment. <laughs> That's funny. Can you show us a quick glance of your equipment? Calvin, I, I, I've been trying to, but this, this rig's been all funky. Like, see, see that exposure? I don't understand why it's doing that. Not really much I can do about it. Now I can't stand up like this. I don't understand it. This this exposure used to jump up and down like crazy. Yeah, look at that. You can't even see me. Now, over here. It's so dark, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? I, let me go grab a light real quick. I know this is crazy, but that's how freaking messed up this exposure is. I have to grab a freaking light. I have to grab a light in order for you guys to freaking see me. Hang on, let me get this. Uh, got one of these construction lights from Home Depot. <clears throat> By the way, for those of you who are new here, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry for not being prepared. Usually I try to prepare as best as I can for these. And in the earlier episodes, as you guys know, I've done a bad job with it. But I'm getting a little better. You know, I just gotta, I just gotta be better with my timing. Like, I gotta learn that when I say I'm gonna take 20 minutes, it really means I'm gonna take 40. So whenever, basically what I'm getting at is the the two times method, as I like to call it, right? When a human says, oh, I'll be done in one hour. Multiply that by two, and that's the real number. So the rule of two. Whenever a human says he'll be, he'll be ready to do something in a certain amount of time, multiply that by two. That's the real number. Should be better, right? All right, let's see. That should be a little better. I don't like it. But, it'll do. Why is it so dark? I don't get it. It's getting dark and all that. Look. I, I don't understand why the exposure isn't working. It is a creepy campfire chat. I agree with you. <clears throat> I can't get it to freaking... I gotta figure that out. Anyway, that's for that's another time. The least I can do is put this light on me to at least shine a little bit of light. No pun intended. But oh, yeah. See, that's the best I can do right now. Just bear with me here. Candles. Yeah, I don't like I said. I don't know why it's so dark. Doesn't make sense. I probably beat this phone up so bad I broke the exposure. I'm not gonna lie. Um, alright. So, let's see where we're at here. Yeah, about 20 more minutes and then we're gonna get off. Let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and get back into the chat here. Um, let's see. Just bought the Greenworks Power Rake after watching Lawn Ginja. When should I use it? Hmm. Well, you can use it anytime you want, really. But, personally, I don't recommend you use that. Because, one thing I've learned, after being a part of this community for the amount of time that I've been, is that when it comes to... What's the best way to say it? When it comes to... God. When it comes to dethatching, I don't like to mechanically remove it and haul it off to the dump. In fact, now, with the knowledge I've obtained, that's a terrible idea. Which is why I recommend you use a product like Dethatch. Because Dethatch, what it'll do is it'll help decompose that thatch. Uh, by It'll utilize that heat. It'll kick up microbial activity in the soil. And it'll help decompose that thatch and put it back down into the soil where it can be utilized as a food source which is a more sustainable way to go, which is why I recommend you get it. But one of the drawbacks with deep thatch is that you have to wait a little later to apply it 
because it's a heat activated product, kind of like the malorganite, right? It relies on that microbial activity. So you're not really, if you live in an area like I do, and you're experiencing the weather I do, which is kind of on and off with warm temperatures, it's going to be a little bit till we can put it down. So we're talking early to mid-May maybe if temperatures are on par, then we can get it down. In fact, if you'd like to hear me do videos explaining a little bit more about when to put it down and how, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I will show you how to do so. Yeah, man, this lighting is really bad. <laughs> well, the lighting's not bad. It's the freaking exposure on the camera. <clears throat> All right. Let's see where we're at. Jake, I have soil. I have Allen soil activator pack from Next. Can I put down aerate and deep thatch simultaneously with RGS and Green Effect? Yes. When in doubt, put them all down. It's only going to help. Um, Honda has a new robotic lawnmower. What are your thoughts on having them work for you? Hmm. I don't know. Never, never tried them before. M Mace JK rekindle. <laughs> Don't manually dethatch St. Augustine. I learned the hard way using a rake. Yeah, man. You don't want to do St. Augustine, especially with that Stoloniferous rhizomatous growth pattern. You do not want to mess with it. Ain't worth it. God, this lighting is so bad. That's the best I can get. I know this is pretty creepy, but uh, just bear with me. Jake, why did you say somebody had a job? Oh, because somebody in the chat said I did. <laughs> Russian, Russian collision. <laughs> What's go? Hi, <laughs> Rashid, I like that. What's going on? World War Three. that's the best freaking comment ever. No, so the exposure on my phone here is all jacked, and because of that, I can't get it to freaking, you know, adjust to what's going on. Luckily, we only got 18 more minutes, and I'm getting off. So for those of you guys who are here, that's it. Just removed a rock fire pit area, uh, 10 by 4, trying to get Kentucky bluegrass to grow on um, NKY area, northern Kentucky, I had to get, if I had to guess. Uh, Creeping Charlie around area, hints for success, plan of attack. Mm, okay, so you removed a rock fire pit, 10 by 4, trying to get KBG to grow there, what I recommend you do is focus on the problem at hand. So if you have weeds, spray the weeds. You want to learn a little bit more how to do that, then make sure that, you, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because I'll be releasing a video this Sunday on how to do so. And then once you treat the weeds and you've gotten that problem out of the way, you want to look at what you can do to prevent further weeds from coming in or at least reduce them. So... Um, what am I getting at? So from here, it's about nurturing that soil, right? Nurturing the soil, nurturing the grass that's there. And the way we do that is frequent mowing and fertilization with bluegrass. Because the more you push bluegrass, the more it's going to grow lateral and the more it's going to fill in those areas. And then keep in mind, whatever doesn't fill in, you can always seed in the fall. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, then follow along with me as I take you through the year and show you. How many acres do you think you mow, Calvin DeJong says? Huh, that's an interesting question. I don't know. I mean, all. let's see, I cut about 12 lawns. Yeah, 12 lawns. We'll say 12 lawns. And they're all about 6,000 square feet. So about 72,000, I'd have to say. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about a little over an acre and a half. So almost two acres to be exact. <laughs> Um, sorry about the lighting once again. Mm, sounds like a live PD lawn care edition. <laughs> it's funny. Turn the garage light on. L Larry George, I've tried everything. Listen, this, this is all I have right here. This is it. I'm using this construction light. I'm using this construction construction light and it's still not working. Hey, that actually looks pretty funny. <laughs> the exposure won't adjust. I don't understand that. I let my dad deal with it. Doesn't feel like walking two steps to take out the battery. 
The price of gas has gone up to $3 a gallon anyway, so save on fuel. Dude, Anthony J. Barton, I couldn't be more glad that you said that. I was, I, I had the same reaction you did when I went to the gas station today. I spent like $30 on 10 gallons. Really? That's crazy. I hate people who let their grass grow to four inches and then want me to mow it straight down to two inches. Do you agree? Do you agree? Why do customers think they're always right? Because, because that's how they're bred. That's what they've heard. Customers are always right. But that's that's another thing though too, especially when the customers don't even know how to care for the lawn in general. It drives me nuts. It drives me nuts when they try to act like they do. They just need to stop and let the professional do the work and recommend them what's best. I wish they would think like that, but they don't. Um, let's see what we got here. Where's the fire? Inspiration, don't have one tonight. I was in rush. Sorry about that. Um, let's see what we got here. How to keep the neighbor's clover in his own yard? That's a good question. Um, for one, Make sure you're nurturing the soil in your area because having clover in your area can be, you know, it can, in, it can indicate a lot of things, uh, especially if your soil is bare to begin with. I would work on correcting that problem, nurturing the soil and putting grass back in that area. Now, if you do happen to have grass in there, it's just a matter of getting a soil test and seeing what you need to correct, seeing what you need to balance out, see, see what you need to pull back on. And then as a result, you, you should less likely notice any weeds creeping into your lawn now also a good thing to do just to get right to the point is to you know be a good neighbor and spray some of that clover that's creeping onto your yard only that clover that's it is youtube profitable i want to start a youtube channel so i can write off my water bill as a business expense um you know what david it is with time though it's not going to be profitable right away you got to remember that <clears throat> but if you're willing to put in the work, you should be fine. Aaron, Jake, I've been mowing a lot of wet grass this week. Got to do what you got to do. That's right, Aaron. That's right. It's business owners understand. Buy yourself a still FS94R trimmer. Notice that you love still tools. Yes, I do. In fact, um, with the money I'm going to get from selling this Craftsman here, which I've told you guys about a couple of times, I'm going to be selling the... Uh, I'm going to be selling my Craftsman 42. Um, I'm going to be doing that on Craigslist. And once I get the ad posted, I'm actually going to go ahead and mention it here on the channel. Uh, so if any of you guys are in the area and you're interested in buying it, um, I'll give you all the detail and whatnot and where we can meet if you're interested in picking it up. But either way, if you guys, anybody's interested, let me know. Hey, Jake, I'm screwed. Now one of my customers got a hold of me. I actually got a hold of her, and she said that the grass is growing out past her sidewalk right now. Hmm. That's a tough one. Hey, Jake, I'm screwed. Now one of my customers uh, got a hold of me. I actually got a hold of her, and she said that the grass is growing out past her sidewalk right now. Oh, yeah, man, I hate those calls. Especially the customers that want you to wait. <clears throat> The customers that want you to wait, the customers who want you to wait so long, it's it's ridiculous, man. And then you show up and cut it, and then they're giving you this lecture. Why is the grass so long? It's uh, because you waited too long for me to mow it. <clears throat> Time to shut it down. <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right, we've got a couple more minutes, and then we're getting off here. So let's see, we're at 48, yeah, 12 more minutes, and then that's going to be it for tonight. You know what, for the sake of it, I'm just going to turn the camera around here, because we, I don't know if you got, if that's any better, but it's definitely better than what's going on with this freaking lighting. So let's move over here. Should be better, no? I don't, I don't know, like I said, I don't know what's up with this exposure, but all I can tell you is that... Ah. Alright, well, this is all you're going to get for tonight. Luckily, we only got like 10 more minutes, so next time I'll be able to plan this out a little more. Um, let's see what we got here. <clears throat> 
I am really late in the chat here, too. Hop Hops, creepy campfire chat. Yes, I agree with you. Time to shut it down. Uh, Anthony J. Barton, it's time to start a fire. Cannot see you. I agree 100%. I will remember that for next time. Uh, get a toy lifesaver. That's funny. Don't fall down. Someone put a bag over my head. Very max he headroom effect for you older viewers. <laughs> max headroom. Um, how are we going to pull an all-nighter? We're not going to pull an all-nighter. We're getting off at uh, 730 um, lighting is fantastic for a horror video. <laughs> I love that. You guys are freaking funny, dude. I love that. That's funny. Where is my popcorn? I don't know. Where is it? Stay safe, Jake. See you next week. See you, Andy. Hip Hox, I'm out of here. Enjoy the mo chat. You too, Hop Hops. Um, Sean McLaughlin, I might not have been able to do anything in my backyard, including putting down pre-emergent. No mowing, and it is a new lawn from last fall. Um, I have not been able to do anything in my backyard, including putting down pre-emergent. Uh, no mowing, and it's a new lawn from last fall. Too much rain up here in Cleveland area. Yeah, man, that's a lot of pain. So, definitely start mowing that, because mowing's going to stimulate growth. Get your first cut in there, and then once you do that, you mow two more times at that height, and then you gradually raise it up. And then from there, based on how fast your grass starts growing, you can also start taking up the frequency as well. Uh, to how often you mow, so keep that in mind. Just messing with me. <laughs> What's up, Jake? It's pouring by me here on Long Island, New York, but it's okay. All right, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lambert1702, Green Doc told me today that clover can be a symptom of alkaline soil. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So if that's the case, you might want to use a product like gypsum, That'll kind of help correct that. Now, as far as the scientifics behind that, don't ask me. I don't know. Um, but I do know people who do in the community here, like John Perry, Matt Martin, all of them. So if you want to email me at Jacob Sullivan at gmail, Jacob, Sullivan Jacob 68 at gmail.com with any questions about your lawn, then by all means, feel free to do so. I'm more than happy to answer them. <clears throat> all right. John Kane, time to get an arc here on Lou. Yeah. Hmm. Skip that one. You know it's Striper Man. Hi Jake, what's up? Richie eighty five, how you doing? John Kane the third, Striper Man, I can't wait to get the Carbon X. You know what's funny? Uh I know you weren't talking to me, John Kane, but I can't wait either. I'm psyched. Um, let's see what we got here. Try adjusting the exposure, the sun icon. Yeah, I've been trying to do that all night. It won't work. Well, I, I touched the screen. It doesn't do anything. Unless I lock something. That's... Yeah. Yes! Yes! There we go. Now we're good. Boom! All right. I figured it out. I couldn't be any happier now. Now I could turn it back this way. Dude, you have no idea how psyched I am that the, light, the lighting works now. Yes, I figured it out. All you had to do is turn the camera around. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we can turn this freaking light off now. We don't need it. But yeah. So we are nearing the end of the show here. Oh, I've had a lot of problems. I've been dropping stuff tonight. <clears throat> All right, I'm glad you guys can see me now. That is so much better. I'm actually reading the questions off an iPad here, so. <clears throat> Man, I'm so glad I did that. I should have done that a long time ago. What was I thinking? Clearly nothing. Um, good on you, Jake, powering through your technical glitch and keeping the show going. Thank you, 79 Mini. I appreciate it. Um, I brought a bag of granular furt with Prodiamine and put it down last week. I am up in Connecticut. Tons of rain last few days. You think it's washed out? Um... I get this question a lot, development, if that's how I pr pronounce your name. I actually like that, by the way. Um, very good way to, you know, use your name. Very good username, very creative. Now, this is a common question that I actually do get a lot. Um, heavy rains, heavy rains, predominant fertilizer, does it wash it away? Now, I wouldn't worry about that personally. In fact, think, of, think about it this way. You got that heavy rain. 
which is actually something we've needed for quite some time now because that rain is actually beneficial to us because it will it will water that product down into the ground where it needs to be so that it can be utilized so I wouldn't worry about it if it did get washed the way it did if it did it didn't but to be on the safe side no need to reapply until your next round um, set the camera guy on fire yeah well I better set myself on fire because I'm the camera guy um, are you are your hands sweating in those gloves says Larry George no they're not in fact um, maybe on the hot summer days they are in fact they're probably sweating a little bit right now because I'm I, I've been stressing about this camera exposure but other than that they are fine now these are good gloves though, I will tell you they're super durable look at how strong these things are and these are rubber gloves I have a whole freaking pair of them sitting right there you'll hear me talk about them more over the weekend um, what is the Craftsman mower doing back there? Oh, that one? Yeah, I'm actually going to be selling that. Um, I'm going to be selling that very soon. So if you guys want to hear a little bit more about it, then uh, make sure make sure to stay tuned because I'll be posting the details on Craigslist very soon. And when I do, I'll, I'll notify you guys ahead of time so that any of you guys who are in the area and you're interested, let me know. Um... Next week, can you do a video in Braille? Hmm, what does that mean? Um, John Kane the third, Carbonex. J Thanks, John Perry. Yeah, man, John Perry's the man. Uh, John Kane the third, you're the man, Jake. Thank you, John Kane. I appreciate it. I think he's getting mad at me. No, no, Larry George. I, I don't know what it is. It's when I read comments as opposed to hearing them in person. I, I tend to take them more seriously. I don't know why. I, 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 sometimes I tend to be a sensitive ass when I'm, when I'm on these live streams, when I'm reading comments, because, you know, a lot of people ask me serious questions, and then I see, like, a joke in there, and then I, for some reason I take it seriously, and I don't mean to, but, uh, yeah, I guess that's what you got to deal with. All right, where are we at on time here? we got three more minutes to go. Um, you know what? For those of you guys who are hardcore and want to stick around, I actually have to mow my front lawn tonight before I head inside for the night. Would you guys like me to stay on here live so you can watch? What do you guys think? I, I will mow the front section here. I will trim it, edge it, blow it, all of that. And I will let you guys stay here and watch it. You know, enjoy enjoy the mow with me. What do you guys think? What do you, you guys want to do it? Because we'll do it. So once that one hour rolls around, we'll answer a couple more questions. And we'll do it. So I'll set the camera up out here and we'll make it work. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I just, I know that a lot of us are coming into the spring and some of us are lagging behind because we're getting these freaking snow flurries that keep coming into the forecast. Like me, you, a lot of people. Like tomorrow we're supposed to get freaking really bad snow flurries and I'm not psyched about that. But either way, we're going to, we're going to sit back and we're going to, we're just going to have a good time. We're going to enjoy a mow together, as Alan would say. So we'll do that. So if you guys have any other questions you want to ask me, um, we have about two minutes left, and then we'll get into it. Steaks are ready later, Jake. Thank you, Lambert, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, can I use Milo along with the next products? Ned Gallic, yes, you can. They are going to be beneficial. Now, to be a little more specific with that, if you want to use, if you like to use the... Uh, if you'd like to use any products in, in conjunction with the Morganite application, all of them will do just fine, specifically the microgreen and the aerate, because one thing that Morganite lacks in is potassium, and potassium is a vital element to have, especially in the summer, to help with cell, de, um, to help with the cell development in plants. So one way to, uh, so one way to kind of uh, you know, supplement that's, that potassium that we're not getting from the Morganite is to use a product like the Aerate or the Microgreen that tend to have a little bit of potassium in there. All right, a couple more minutes, and then we are going to, we're going to mow. And I'm going to let you guys stay along for the ride. And then we're going to get set up here. I got to say, I, these days are really exciting to me. Like the fact that we're in the full-on throes of spring and I get to do this. So if you guys have one more question, well, I'll take one more and then we'll get to the mowing. Actually, I'll take two more because they're here. I put down 53 pounds per thousand on Dolmitic Lime. Don't want to wait a year uh, for the correction. Can I put out Sulisol also on top? Um, Eric Hughes, 
I have no idea what Silasol is, but I'll have to do my research and get back to you. So ask me about it next week, and we'll see what we can do. Um, all right, let's see where we're at here. <laughs> Anthony, that's funny. I like your thinking. I like it a lot. All right, well, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the Q&A portion of this live stream. We're going to get, get go ahead and get into the mowing. So for those of you guys who are getting off the live stream, I just want to say thank you so much for all you've done. With that, I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thank you for watching. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. If I don't see you guys next time, you're going to be dominated, bro. See you later. All right. For those of you guys who are staying, we are on to the mowing. So let's... uh. Wrap this up. Yeah, you think you're cool? Yeah. She's uh she's back there doing her Snapchat thing, you know, doing her thing, making fun of me. <laughs> it's all fun though. It's all fun, that's all it is here. Alright. Dude, check this out. My neighbor right here, look at this down the street. It's awesome. All right. Ah. Let's get into the mode. I gotta, I gotta set this up and plug it in. Just give me a second here. Make sure we good on fuel. We should be. All right. Perfect. Do do do. All right. <clears throat> We're good with the gas. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. All right, what do you guys think? I know Anthony Barton's getting excited. He's all about these late night shows. How you guys doing? All right, how you doing? Great. Surprised Alan didn't stick around. Oh, come on, you guys will be fine up there. See? So, I'll probably come back here and turn it for you guys if I have to, but that'll be about it. That should, that should be fine. I have you guys on top of a garbage can right now. You should see this. It's 8.30. <laughs> oh, this part right here. Yeah, I'm actually glad I showed this to you guys because I've been postponing showing this to you for a while. So this here... This is a bare spot from all the foot traffic that's been taking place in the winter. Just been so much going on here, so it makes sense why there's a bare spot. But I'm going to be showing you guys um, some treatments we're going to be doing with the next biostimulant products to help bring that back. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, then make sure you are, and I will show you exactly how to fix areas like that. All right. Should be good. What do you guys think? Real quick. Let me know if you guys like the camera angle. Are we good up here? Should be. Let's see. We should. You know what? I want to do one more thing. 
See, I'm trying, because the last thing I want to do is have this rig fall over, and that'll ruin the entire night. All right, I'm gonna shut up. I also lowered it a little too, for those of you who didn't like how high it was. So there, there's, there's the new angle. All right, let me just plug it in. Rise it up just a bit more. God, it's not what I wanted. I know you guys are so pissed at me right now because I'm trying to get ready for this and I, I, I'm trying not to half ass it because the last thing I want is uh. All right. <laughs> All right, we're good. If it falls, it falls, but I highly doubt it will, so we should be all right. One more thing. Make sure that you wear your safety equipment, especially while I'm on live video right here. I'm going to put these guys on here, my ISO tunes that I was looking for earlier. I'm going to put these on. Don't have any music playing because my phone's right here, but uh, good way to protect the ears, too. They fit in nicely. They hook like this. If you guys would like them, check the link of the, in the description after the chat's over and I will have a, uh, I'll have a, I'll have a link down there where you can pick these up. Alright, let's get into the mo. So, a lot of you guys saw my video too and I'm actually glad you're here is that this mower takes a couple pulls to get started. Some of you are wondering, well, why is that? Well, I don't know exactly, but I guarantee there's something going on internally. I mean, this mower is a little old. Um, I, I had to guess about 10 years plus, because I inherited it from a family member. Uh, so it still needs a little bit of work done. So if it takes a couple more than four pulls to start it, then that's why.
I gotta show this to you. Wow, glad you guys are actually sticking around. This is cool. Real quick, I want to go ahead and show you. Um, let me see if I can take this from mobile. Should be able to. If it goes out, it does. Check this out. So, one of the common problems we'll run into in the spring is that, let's come up here real quick. Notice how the lawn just kind of looks patchy, like some areas are taller than others. And then in conjunction to that, we have some problem grasses, like I've talked about on the channel, the uh, the quack grass, the poa annua, all of that stuff, the poa triv, yeah, the triv. So, what I, what, so let me just show you something real quick. While there's nothing you can do to chemically control them, there are some mechanical processes you can take into into play. Check this out. So look, although the lawn looks a little patchy now, look right here. Check this out. See? Nice and level, and the problem grasses are stunted. So the idea being is that, you know, these first couple mows, I wanted to do them with a couple days in between because I didn't want to hurt anything. I don't want to push too much, too much growth right now, really, because uh, things aren't growing too much right now. But what I wanted to do is you know, give this a cut down to stimulate a little more growth so that it can green up. And also another thing you'll notice as we walk through here, we do have some brown remnants in here. That's okay. The lawn's still coming out of winter dormancy, especially if you have sodded lawns, you tend to run into this issue a lot. So that's what's going on here. So this just goes to show you that really the best way to control any problem grass in your lawn is just to mow it out. See, like look right here. Kentucky bluegrass, quack grass, and we have a little bit of trivialis over here, which will die out in the heat of the summer. So nothing to really worry about. Um, but also, the, the overall message I wanted to convey here is, look, if you notice any areas like this, you know, if the lawn looks kind of patchy, right, like some areas are taller than others, just mow it. Mow it lower than normal, too, because when you do that, you're evening the field out. And that's t that totally stands true with bluegrass. Like, just come over here and look at this. Looks really good. And you got to remember, the more we mow this lawn here, especially bluegrass, which grows rhizomatously, the more lateral growth we're stimulating, which over time will be able to culturally thicken this problem out. So, while it looks ugly now, I'm telling you, as we progress into the year and we start mowing it, it's going to look really, really good. All right. Enough talking there. To you guys, pure mowing, and I'm going to give it to you. So for those of you um, hardcore fans, I appreciate it. So let's uh, let's get back to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the rest of this area here. Then we're going to trim and edge it, blow it off. And if you guys want to do more, I, I'd be more than happy to film the rest of the lawn too. It's up to you guys. Because I, as long as you guys are happy, I am happy. <laughs> All right, so just let me know. All right, now I'm going to finish up. And the best part is about finishing up now is I'm going to be coming towards you because I finished all this up. So let's get it done.
onto the trimming. Actually, we'll start down there.
All right. Not bad. You guys are still here. That's awesome. Here. Let's take a look over here. Looking way better. Nice and cut. Nice fresh edge over here. It's really... I wonder if the camera is going to show it, but uh, let's look over here. Yeah, man. I wish you... The camera really doesn't do it justice. You have to see it in real life. Is that fescue? Daniel Hewig says, no, this is, this is a, a mixture of rye and Kentucky bluegrass, mainly Kentucky bluegrass. That's what I have throughout my property here is Kentucky bluegrass. A little bit of rye in there, not much, but look, looking good. Let me show you. So we'll come down here. Look at how, see, you like have to really be here to see it. Look at how... How beautiful this looks. It just goes to show that when you mow the lawn, it solves pretty much all your problems. And then whatever it doesn't solve right now, it'll solve with time. So if you're going to take anything away from tonight's live stream, let that be it. All right, with all that being said, said i'm gonna go ahead and get off here i hope you guys enjoyed that as a little bonus for not having a fire this week which i sincerely apologize about um i'm gonna go ahead and finish up the other side here which by the way i'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick right there gotta finish that and i gotta finish the back i'm gonna go ahead and get off here because personally with the sunlight right now i want to enjoy this myself while listening to some jazz music so I hope all of you guys out there are going to have a great night and you're looking forward to Friday's video coming out here. I'll be able to show you guys um, be able to show you guys a little more um, in depth with the wheat spraying I'm going to be doing this week. So stay tuned for that coming up this Sunday and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. So with that, I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If I don't see you guys next time, you're going to be dominated, bro. See you this Sunday in the video.